I think about uh, equity and social justice, I first want to define it, right? Any good mathematician is going to give you a definition. Personal or circum uh, social circumstances, such as gender, ethnic origin, or family background, are not obstacles to achieving educational potential. So that's going to be our definition of fairness and that all individuals reach at least a basic minimum level of skill, so our definition of inclusion, right? So no obstacles, nothing in your background should prevent you from achieving your education, and we all need to get to some basic level, right? That's how we're going to define that equity. You've got a beautiful position statement. I loved it so much. It's here, right? Three things that we talk about doing, that you talk about doing, that I strive to do in my classroom, even at the collegiate level. How can I be responsive to my students' background, to their cultural experiences, to their traditions, to their knowledge, when I design my course? And at a place like Harvey Mudd, which is a STEM institution, that's a hard conversation to have because the counterpoint is like, look, it's math, it's physics. Like, it's, it is what it is. Engineering is computer science, right? So sometimes it's a challenge for us in STEM to see what inclusivity could look like in our classrooms. Here's a basic example of something that I had to personally change. Whenever I did an example in my classroom, it was like, Alex, Bob, and Chris, go to the blah, 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 right? And you don't, I didn't think anything of it. Sure, Alex, Bob. And eventually I was like, you know, do I even have an Alex and a Bob in my class? Like, none of my students were named Alex and Bob. At no point did I think about the fact that the names I use are just colloquial A and B, right? A and B has become Alice and Bob. Not Muhammad or Sylvia or Shaniqua. I've never taught a Shaniqua, but Shaniqua or Talithia. So something as simple as creating an environment where I'm intentional in using examples and using names that my students can relate to, giving an example that's more along their cultural experience. Okay. Sonia sends out a Snapchat, five Snapchats. It's like, what? You know, like, Prof. Williams, you know what a Snapchat is? Right? I automatically get like cool points, you know, <laughs> instead of like flipping a die. Oh man, it's hard to teach probability. And card tricks, they're just like, a die? What? I'm like, oh, that's right. You guys don't play with dies and cards anymore. Right, so how can we think about how to bring in our students' cultural experience? Number two, acknowledge and addressing factors that contribute to differential outcomes among groups of students are critical to ensuring that they routinely have opportunities to experience high quality mathematics instruction, learn challenging content, and receive the support necessary to be successful. This is sometimes a challenge because what I observe is that sometimes expectations, I've got three boys, Donald and I have three boys, sometimes the expectation for them is not as high because they're good. They're not in gangs, their dad's not in jail, their parents are married. They're like, you're doing great, you guys just, it's okay, just, you're doing good, just keep on doing what you're doing, just don't join a gang, don't get in jail, you're good. I'm like, no, 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 he got a B minus. That is unacceptable. They're like, what kind of mom? Right? I want you to push my boys just as hard because they can do it. Right? They need the support to do it, but I don't need you to take pity on them because they're from a certain, like, oh, you guys have it so hard. Let me just, it's, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Like, no, they need the same push and challenge that every student is going to get because it gives them something to rise to. Right? It's saying, I see more in you. I see something in you. You can be better. That's what Mr. Dorman did for me. I was a C student in AP Calculus. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I can do mathematics. I am going to do, I'm going to show him. He was right. Right? He gave me something to push toward and live up to because he believed in me. And I want to push you to believe in your students, even the ones that are C students, because they could one day be in front of you talking to you about their mathematical journey and be like, oh, that teacher, she was the best one I ever had. She believed in me when I was failing her class and not turning my homework in. Right? That's exactly what he could have said. Number three, addressing equity and access includes both ensuring that all students attain mathematical proficiency and increasing the number of those students from various racial, racial ethnic, gender, socioeconomic groups to get to the highest level of mathematical attainment. This is where I spend a lot of my time 
thinking about how we can increase the number of women, underrepresented groups that pursue mathematics and STEM. Right? How can we inspire that generation to go into something that is hard and challenging and be excited to do it?